Let's practice finding the equation of a tangent line to a given equation at a specific x value together. For the example in this video, we're going to use this rational equation of y is equal to this 2x plus 5 on top over this x squared minus 3 on bottom. Now just so you can picture this a little bit better before we get started, this is what the graph of this particular equation would look like. Now what we're going to do is we're going to find the equation of a line, specifically a linear one like maybe in the form of y equals mx plus b, and it's got to be tangent to this graph that we see below at this given x value of x equals 1. So you can see right here on the graph that x equals 1 right over here. So our job here is to find out the equation of a straight line that is going to be tangent to this graph when x is equal to 1. So we're essentially finding out the equation of a straight line that's going to be just touching the graph right at x equals 1 here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to solve for the y coordinate where the point of tangency is or where that straight line is going to be touching this graph and we said it's going to be right around here right so we know x is equal to one but we need to find out the y value that goes with it so to do that we're just going to go ahead and take our original equation and we're basically going to take each of these x's over here and we're going to substitute in one in each of those scenarios all right, so if we go ahead and plug in one on top, you're gonna to see this two times one is gonna be two, plus the five is gonna give us a seven for the numerator. And then in the bottom here, we have one squared, which is one, minus three is negative two. So we have seven over negative two. Uh, we can go ahead and also write this as negative three and a half or negative 3.5 as well. So for this rational equation, uh, we can see that when x is equal to 1, y is going to equal negative 3.5. So let's go ahead and write that as a coordinate. Uh, we have 1 comma negative 3.5. This is what we would call the point of tangency. So plotting this point, we can see that if you go 1 to the right and then 3.5 units down, this is where the point is going to be where this uh, tangent line is going to just touch this rational equation. Now at this point, if you wanted to kind of just visualize what this linear equation we're looking for is going to look like, it's gonna look something like this, right? Where it's going to be uh, going through that point of tangency and is just touching the rational equation at that point. And you can see that we're looking for something with a negative slope. All right, so in order to find the slope at that given point, we have to find the derivative of this equation. All right, so if we go ahead and take the derivative here, uh, we're going to have dy dx on the left side. And then on the right side, it's going to be uh, more complicated, right? So we have this rational equation, which means we have a function divided by a function. So we're going to go ahead and use the quotient rule here. Now to use the quotient rule, I'm going to try to organize this a little bit here. I'm going to call this top uh, function just u for now. I'm going to say that this is going to be u is going to be equal to this 2x plus 5. And so what's du going to be, or the derivative of that? Um, that's just going to be using the power rule. That's going to be derivative of 2x is going to be 2. And then the derivative of a 5 is 0, so I'm not going to go ahead and write that. Uh, for the bottom here, we have this x squared minus 3. Let's call that v for now. So that's going to be x squared minus 3. And so what's dv? dv is going to be, let's use that power rule. So that 2 is going to come in front. So that's going to be 2x. And then the derivative of minus 3 is just 0. All right, so what's that quotient rule again? Remember, the quotient rule is that v times du minus u times dv over v squared. So using that, let's go ahead and substitute in each of those pieces. All right, so substituting in here, we have v multiplied by du minus u multiplied by dv over this v squared. So this right here is the derivative of our original equation, and it tells us what that instantaneous rate of change or slope is going to be at different x values. Now, we don't care about all the x values for this problem or the slope at any x value. Now, we don't care about the slope at every x value for uh, this particular equation. We only care about the slope or the rate of change here when x is equal to 1. So let's go ahead and take this derivative and specifically only look at it when x here is going to be equal to that value of 1 that we're talking about. So substituting in 1 for x here in each of these spots. We can see here that for this part of the numerator, 1 squared is 1 minus 3 is going to be negative 2. Negative 2 times 2 is going to be negative 4. So we're going to go ahead and write here that we have negative 4 minus. And then over here, we have 2 times 1, which is going to be 2. 2 plus 5 is going to be 7. And then on the outside, we have 2 times 1 is 2. 
uh, 7 times 2 is going to be 14. So we're going to have negative 4 minus 14 on the numerator. And then in the denominator, what do we have? Looks like inside the parentheses we have 1 squared, which is 1. 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is going to be a positive 4. Alright, so specifically the derivative here when x is equal to 1. On top we're going to get this negative 18 over 4. And then we can go ahead and simplify that and say that's going to be negative 9 over 2. This is going to be the slope of that tangent line we're looking for. And hopefully that makes sense that it's negative just because we knew it was going to be kind of going through this point at this downward slope so that it would be tangent to the equation. All right, so let's start putting a couple pieces together now. Let's go ahead and use point slope form, which is this right here to find the equation of that straight line that's gonna be tangent to the equation. All right, so if we're gonna use point slope form for this linear equation, we must have a point, which is gonna be this point of tangency right here. Let's go ahead and bring that down so we can go ahead and use that. And we're gonna go ahead and use that in combination with this slope here of the tangent line. So we're going to use that point of tangency of 1 comma negative 3.5 and that's going to be our x1 y1 and then m our slope here is going to be that negative 9 over 2. Let's go ahead and plug those in. All right, so once we go ahead and plug it in, let's just go ahead and simplify this a bit. So instead of saying y minus negative 3.5, we can just say y plus this 3.5. And then on the right side here, we can go ahead and distribute this uh, negative 9 over 2. So that's going to be negative 9 over 2x. And then negative 9 over 2 times negative 1 is going to be plus 9 over 2. Then just so we have fractions all the way across, instead of writing 3.5, that's 3.5 or 7 over 2. Just going ahead and convert that real quick. And so if we go ahead and then take away 7 over 2 from the left side and the right side, we're going to see that this is going to be y is equal to negative 9 over 2x plus 2 over 2, or that's the same thing as 1. This right here is the equation of the tangent line when x is equal to 1. And just in case you want to see this visually on a graph, let's go back up here and look at the graph that we had before. And we can see looking at maybe two points on the graph that we have a rise here of 4.5 and a run of one. So that slope of negative nine over two or negative 4.5 makes sense because we're going down 4.5 units and over one. And so given that rational equation and the specific X value equal to one, we were able to find out that tangent line or that linear equation that was going through and touching this rational equation specifically at that one point. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing with a classmate or friend who might also find it helpful. And as always, keep up the great work that you're already doing, and I'll see you in the next one.